For the first time since I was 10 years old and first played Halo Reach, I have my Noble Six set up to the default Spartan armor, the Mark V-B. No color customization, no armor variation, no personalization. You might be asking, why? And my answer is simple. I'm preparing for Halo Infinite. We finally know what armor coatings are, and they are exactly what a lot of us were fearing. Say goodbye to your primary and secondary armor coloring customization. Now, if you want to customize the color of your Spartan, you must purchase a prescribed, already set color variation that 343 has created. Say goodbye to your own sense of personalization. Say goodbye to choice. Now, the way you look in Halo Infinite is decided solely by 343 developers themselves. Now, it's unknown if we're gonna have to do the same in terms of unlocking different armor. I remember way back 343 said something about reach style progression, which means points, but if they're already doing this with armor coatings, then I could totally see them being like, all right, let's make sure they really have to grind so that we can incentivize them to just dish out a little more money. And honestly, this changed my entire opinion on this game's release. I'm sitting here now playing as a bland Noble Six and it's depressing. The last time I walked down this road was the last time I let myself get excited and feel joy and happiness for an upcoming game. That was Metal Gear Solid 5, and after that I've just become so much more jaded and cautious whenever something that seems like something I would like comes out. I feel like I need to be careful, otherwise I'll be sent right down that path of disappointment again. And after going through all of the trends of microtransactions and loot boxes and just all the bullshit that's gone down this generation, I honestly wasn't even going to buy into the next console generation. I was just going to buy all the PS4 games that I hadn't bought because they were too expensive because you know they're going to dip in price now that the PS5 and Xbox Series X has come out. And then I was going to go back and pick up some old PS2 games and just play games that weren't riddled with all of this bullshit and I thought nothing could bait me in to get excited again. But then with the Halo Infinite gameplay reveal trailer, yeah it was flawed but at the time I didn't see those flaws, I cried and I said to myself, this is beautiful because I truly felt like they were bringing back Halo Combat Evolved just in an open world formula and expanding on something that I had grown up loving. Combat Evolved was my first game, I mean, my first YouTube video ever that was done like back when I was 14 years old that I have on private because it's honestly really shitty quality of me just recording the TV screen of playing Combat Evolved, trying to do a walkthrough, share with the world what I loved. Like, I love Combat Evolved. It's between Combat Evolved and Halo, uh, I mean, Metal Gear Solid 2 in regards to what my favorite game of all time is. So when I saw this, and it just brought me back there and, and I literally cried and I was like, wow, this game managed to invoke such a strong emotional response in me. I need it. I, I really think that this is gonna be the one. It gave me hope again when I was just so beyond that. But now I'm worried. This whole armor coating debacle is a very glaring red flag that even I, with such emotional ties to, to Halo Infinite, I, I just, I can't ignore. It's just too big of a bad sign. Like, what does this mean for everything else? Like, I'm proud that they delayed the game and they want to perfect it. And you know what? There are things that can save this game, even with armor coating being as screwed up as it is. Like, if the campaign really does end up feeling like combat evolved in an open world, I'll probably still get the game. If we get a firefight mode and a decent armor progression system, I'll still get the game. However, I'm cautious again. I'm brought back to those feelings from Metal Gear Solid 5. And I might not just get the Xbox Series X when it comes out. I might do what I've always done for the past couple of years. Wait till it's out, wait till Halo Infinite multiplayer is out, wait till the campaign is out, and wait around until I have a YouTuber that I trust tell me, hey, this is okay to get. They're not too scummy. This is the bad stuff they're doing, but you do get Firefight, Combat Evolved campaign, the armors are fair, it's still a nice strong gameplay loop. Otherwise, I'm just gonna keep playing Combat Evolved. 
Now for all you guys who have been here on this channel for a while, you know I don't like getting negative about things. I like talking about things I look forward to and going back and talking about games that made me happy when I was younger, when the industry was different. And looking at where I started and what I'm doing now, I really feel like my channel's finally in a position to do that. I'm familiar with the platform, I'm familiar with my own style of making videos now, and I really think that I can show what these older games captured. So you can look forward to more. I don't know if you've checked it out, if you're into Metal Gear. I'm doing a Metal Gear Solid 2 review. Later on, you can bet your ass I'm gonna be reviewing Combat Evolved. And yeah, so you know what? In that spirit, let's go ahead and end this video off by doing a point list of the points that I brought up and some other new ones that will still save Halo Infinite for me because I would really like to when this game comes out if I could do like a walkthrough for Infinite and Combat Evolved or stream them both like simultaneously like one episode after the other to kind of show the parallels when it comes out. I think that would be cool. I still have hope and I want this to end up being good. So let's just go finish this off by talking about the positives that could still keep this spirit alive. So point one is obviously just try to keep as much of the purity of gameplay from Combat Evolve as possible in Halo Infinite. Have each weapon and each enemy have a purpose and have them play into each other. Second thing that's going to save Halo Infinite for me is that if they completely overhaul Forge, I'll be playing it non-stop. Far Cry 4 is a game that yeah, I'll fuck around in the open world for a long time and continuously play it. However, the reason I am still playing Far Cry 4 to this day is because of the map editor mode that allows me to create my own scenarios. If I can create the environment and put AI in it to populate it and create unique, interesting combat scenarios with Halo Sandbox, you better believe if I can make my own fun that I'll be playing Halo Infinite way after it's long dead. Point 3 is also really simple. They may have screwed up the fact that you can't choose your own colors anymore, However, as long as they don't mess around with actual armor unlocking, they said it would be like Reach. Let's see if they deliver on that. But if they do, I'll spend time grinding points or looking for skulls in order to unlock some cool armor so I can look at my Spartan and be like, yeah, I might not be able to color him in, but that's still my Spartan. And point four is perhaps the most important one. No microtransactions in the campaign. This would be the last straw for me. If there's anything, I mean anything in the campaign that interrupts, blocks, or inhibits the gameplay from being the best it can be because of microtransactions, I will never pick this game up. However, if they leave that kind of shit out, leave it in multiplayer, I'll still be bothered, but I will still get this game, and honestly, if it's everything it's promising to be, I'll enjoy the shit out of it. After all, throughout my entire life, the majority of my enjoyment that I've gotten from Halo games has been from the campaign. So if you give me a good campaign and then add new campaigns that I can buy using the game as a platform later on that stand as their own full campaigns, yeah, that'll be awesome. Anyways, those were my thoughts on how Halo Infinite can be saved. I'm honestly really stressed out and really worried. I see red flags, but I really want this game to be good. And if you do too, leave a like on this video, comment down below what you think would save this game would pull it out of the dust with this whole armor coding scenario. Let me know what you think will bring a light of hope shining down on Halo Infinite's development again. Anyways, this has been Pliskin, over and out.